This is Inspired Wellness with Jessica, your new go-to podcast for mind, body, and emotional wellness. Tune in to hear real, raw conversations about stress, anxiety, and holistic self-care. I am your podcast host. My name is Jessica. I am from Inspired Life Collective. I'm an advanced EFT practitioner, meditation therapist, and holistic life coach, and I am on a mission to educate you on how to release stress from your body and dare I say, even prevent it and inspire you to live life with a calm body, a clear mind and thriving emotionally. If you are ready to support your long-term health and wellness, then let's jump straight into the episode. On today's episode of Inspired Wellness, I want to talk about anxiety and I want to talk about it from the perspective of physical things that I experienced in my worst times of anxiety and panic, but also daily. If you have listened to episode one, of this podcast, then you will know that I come from a place of panic disorder. I come from a place where the anxiety was so much more than obsession and worrying and, you know, all of the mental aspects of it, but it was just so physical in my body and What I want to share with you today is, let me be very clear, not intended at all for any kind of medical diagnosis. If you are experiencing symptoms like what I am going to speak about, please still get it checked out. You do need to rule out anything sinister going on within your body and you do need to address it if there is something there. But the reason that I want to share this, that I'm feeling pulled to share this with you guys in this episode is because I know that the symptoms that I experienced were terrifying. And for a very, very, very long time, I refused to believe that it could possibly have just been anxiety that was causing what I was going through. And I want to share this with you because I believe that some awareness around some of these symptoms in my personal experience may help you to feel like you're not so alone. And the other reason that I think it is so important to, you know, really discuss the body's role in anxiety is because there are so many treatments out there that are wonderful, but they only focus on the mind. And the thing is, is that when the fight or flight response is involved, when your amygdala is activated, which is what is happening when you are experiencing physical symptoms of anxiety, the body's role cannot be ignored. You cannot simply treat your, you know, overwhelming thoughts or your negative thought patterns or your obsessive thinking or your constant worrying. You can't simply treat the mind side of it and not acknowledge that the body is involved. Say if your amygdala is activated, if you are in that state of anxiety, The only way to calm that is to activate your relaxation response. And I've spoken about this a lot before. So when you are feeling this way, your logical thoughts, your, you know, calm down, it's fine, there's nothing to be anxious about, or, you know, the well-meaning friend who says, why would you be anxious? It's only this, or whatever the case is those logical thoughts have gone out the window and you need to be bringing in a mind-body intervention. And once you are able to do this, 
and you are able to connect also the, well, I guess the dots between what you are experiencing and how that relates to your fight or flight response, your stress response being activated, that you can actually see that these symptoms are not scary and they are a natural reaction to your fight or flight response. So then you're able to take a lot of the fear out of these awful things that you are experiencing. And if this is something that you would like to learn more about, then I'm going to link in the show notes a link to my Understanding Anxiety Masterclass, where we talk about thought-based anxiety and physical-based anxiety and how it relates to the stress response as well. So I'm going to just start telling you some of the things I experienced. And I would love to know, I would love to hear from you if you get any of these. Now, these things that I experienced, I felt every single day for years. It wasn't coming and going. It was every day. And I had medical investigation after medical investigation done. So simply put, a lump in my throat. It never went away. It was there for four or five years. Every time I swallowed, every time I moved, every time I became conscious of it, there was a lump in my throat. That feeling of being spaced out, that's dissociation. So I was dissociating from my body as an attempt to protect myself, as an attempt to deal with the traumatized state that I was living in that I didn't realize, <laughs> the state of fight or flight, the stress response that I was constantly living in. I dissociated sometimes for weeks at a time. And that's scary. You know, driving the car, going into the shops, going to work, going into meetings, dealing with people and feeling like you are not in full control of your body or your thoughts, all the things that are coming out of your mouth is just an awful feeling. And at no stage did I realize that that was my mind trying to protect myself from the fact that I was just constantly triggered. So dissociation is something I experienced very regularly. And as I said, for weeks at a time, now, if you do experience dissociation at all, you need to be looking at grounding, grounding yourself out in nature, grounding yourself with tapping, grounding yourself by connecting mindful breathing, bring yourself back into your body and back into your moment and tell yourself that you're safe. Remind yourself that you are safe. And then when you can deal with the triggers, deal with what is causing you to dissociate a racing heart and heart palpitations. At one stage during my years of everything that I went through, I was diagnosed with SVT and that's where your heart rate goes up over 160 beats per minute for an extended period of time and generally needs medical intervention to come back down. Now, that diagnosis process went on for a very long time. I had a constant racing heart, constant. I had palpitations that took my breath away. And I really do truly believe in my heart now, after being discharged from the cardiologist now 12 months ago, after having a small procedure to look into everything, I truly believe that that was a result of anxiety. Dizziness. So dizziness is a really common anxiety experience. When you are in a state of stress, okay, so when your body is in a state of stress, you are in the fight or flight response, you are most likely not taking full breath. 
if you are not breathing into your diaphragm, if you are not getting full breaths, then you are beginning to hyperventilate. And when you are getting these short, shallow breaths, you are going to become dizzy. And the short, shallow breathing is something that we do when we're anxious because, as I said, we're in that state of fight or flight. So dizziness, really, really common anxiety thing. And honestly, (laughs) honestly, every day. I know I've said this and I am sharing this because I just want you to know that if you do feel this way, you know, you can get better. You don't have to stay this way because these these symptoms that I had were every single day. There's no wonder that I was at a point where I was like, what does normal life feel like? Why can't I go for a walk or do anything without feeling dizzy? I used to get ringing in my ears. And when I was really anxious or I was going into a state of panic, I would feel like noises were too loud. So when you have so many um, stimulants around you, noise, light, brain will get to a point where when you're in a state of anxiety where you just can't take in anymore so noises sounded louder for me than what they were and it took one small little extra noise to just send me over the edge I had an inability to think clearly I just could not get my words out sometimes I couldn't think straight I couldn't remember things And then I, you know, convinced myself that something else had to be going on. Couldn't just be anxiety causing me to not think properly. Couldn't be anxiety that was causing me to forget what I needed every time I went into a room. But here's the thing. When you are in a state of anxiety and your fight or flight response is activated, the proximity of your amygdala to your center for memory and learning is directly impacted because of the proximity that the amygdala has to that area of your brain. So yes, it absolutely can impact your learning and your memory. And the ability to think clearly can also be impacted because when that part of your brain is in control, The logical part of your brain, your thinking brain, is not. And so you feel like, you know, you're in the passenger seat and crazy town has taken over. And that is a normal anxiety experience if your amygdala is in control. And I go deeper into that in the Understanding Anxiety Masterclass. I used to feel like my breath was being taken away. It used to happen with heart palpitations or I used to convince myself that I had totally forgotten to breathe. That's not possible. (laughs) That doesn't happen. But, you know, anxiety does strange things. And when you are completely unaware of your thought processes and that one single thought, oh my God, did I just forget to breathe? Or did something just happen? Or that heart palpitation, is that more than, you know, just a palpitation? That one little thought starts that whole cycle and the physical anxiety just gets worse. I had so many stomach issues. So there is a huge connection to your gut health and to anxiety. And I'm not going to go into that today. In fact, I might even bring on a guest expert to have a chat about how your gut health can directly impact your anxiety. But the thing is, is that when you are in this state of fight or flight, when your stress response is activated, which again, remember, is happening when you are in this physical state of anxiety, your digestion is not functioning properly because your body is in survival mode. And survival mode doesn't need to digest food. Survival mode needs to, um, you know, get your legs moving so you can run, so you can fight. 
survival mode needs, you know, doesn't need you to go to the toilet. It doesn't need you to process food properly. And if you are in this state for a long period of time, then that directly impacts your digestion. Not to mention all of the wonderful things that happen within your gut that directly impact your mind. So the amount of stomach issues that I had from, you know, toilet issues to severe reflux. And again, investigation after investigation of go on this medication, try this heartburn tablet. It was all anxiety. Crazy, crazy when I think about it. I had pressure in my chest all the time, all the time. This constant fear, this tightness, this pressure that just never let go. I used to have tingling in my fingers, particularly when I was having a panic attack. And that tingling comes from the fact that, again, you are not taking deep breaths. It's the short, shallow breathing, the hyperventilation. Migraines. So I still experience migraines and a lot of them come from muscle tension, which I'm very aware of. But at, you know, some point in time, those migraines were emotionally triggered. And what would happen with a vestibular migraine is that when I had anxiety, I would also get a migraine. And when I would get a migraine, I would also get the anxiety. And so these migraines became a part of my daily life for years. I was sensitive to light. I was ridiculously dizzy. I stopped driving my car because my peripheral vision sent me into a spin. All related to anxiety. Particularly, and I'll probably stress this, long-term chronic stress, long-term chronic anxiety. So all of these physical symptoms, and there was probably so many more, but all of these physical symptoms that I was experiencing, I now only experience fleetingly. I am at a point where I am so self-aware that I know when it's coming and I know how to support myself. Because when I say that learning tapping changed my life, I'm not over-exaggerating. I'm not on an infomercial. I'm not saying this is going to change your life. Tapping probably saved the quality of my life and changed my life so dramatically. I mean, you know me so dramatically that I am an EFT tapping practitioner and I help other people do the same thing. That's how much it changed my life. What I have learned and what I wish somebody told me, and I've said this before, I know, I wish that somebody had explained to me that if I was able to regularly activate my relaxation response, that if I was able to, you know, give that stress response a break, bring my body back to its natural state, then that was going to be one of the strongest ways that I could counteract my panic, that I could prevent anxiety. And that doing these things daily, tapping or meditation or breathing, regular exercise, these are all natural ways that I have been able to manage my anxiety. And this regular you know, this regular practice has mean I've been able to prevent a lot of it as well. And the work, the work that I did on myself for years was hard and it was, you know, scary. And it meant dealing with things that I thought I'd actually dealt with. But the thing is, they were re-triggering. And once I was able to desensitize those with EFT, game changer absolute game changer so I would love to hear from you what of these symptoms you know you resonate with has it been helpful for you to hear 
that not only are the things that you are experiencing from anxiety a normal response to anxiety, but you're also not alone. You're not going crazy. Your body is not letting you down and that there is hope and there are ways that you can get through this alongside your medication, without medication, for long-term relief, long-term management and long-term prevention. Now I'm going to drop the link in the show notes to the Understanding Anxiety Masterclass. If you do experience anxiety and you would like to learn some mind-body techniques to support your anxiety and also get a deeper understanding of, you know, what is going on within your mind and your body, uh, particularly when it comes to the physical side of anxiety, then just jump in that masterclass. You can access it at any time. If you would like to talk further about your personal needs, then please reach out for a discovery call. We can have a free chat about the best way for you to move forward naturally and take back your life. Take back control of your life because that is what you deserve. You will never completely rid yourself of anxiety and you don't want that. You know, if there was a fire or something was wrong, I would want to know about it. We need our anxiety response. We need that healthy anxiety that we can convert into, um, you know, excitement or use as different energies if we have to run a race or take a test or, or, you know, do something else within life. There is a healthy amount of anxiety, but it doesn't need to control you. It doesn't need to cause these miserable symptoms in your life. And whether you are experiencing them daily, all day, some days, a couple of days a week, a couple of days a month, you deserve to feel normal. You've been listening to Inspired Wellness with Jessica. If you loved what you heard today, make sure you subscribe to this podcast and leave a review. If you know someone who would love to hear all about this topic, make sure you share this episode on your socials and tag me at inspiredlife.byjessicaann. You can get in touch with me through my website, www.inspiredlifecollective.com.au. Thank you for tuning in and I look forward to seeing you on the next episode.